Sunday of Advent and the beginning of the wonderful celebration of Christmas. With that, I invite you to rise as we begin with the three quarter confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the parent who rouses us from slumber, the shepherd who gathers us on the holy mountain, the deliverer who sets us free. Amen. Let us come before the living God and confess it. As we wait and watch for the promised day of salvation, we open our hearts to you, O God. Search us and know us. Reveal all that we can inside. To you, O God, we confess our sins, known and unknown. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us in your ways of justice and peace. Make us reflections of the radiant love of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Beloved children of the Most High, you are gathered before the righteous judge who has mercy on all. Splash exuberantly in the waters of baptism where sin is washed away in the river of life. Dwell peacefully in the loving arms of the one who nurtures all creation. Go forth boldly in the assurance that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the one who is coming and is already here, Jesus Christ, our Savior.
For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God, with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves. Who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are all called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Joseph. But before they lived together, 
be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived of her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, to say that I'm excited is an understatement. We are literally simply a few days away from... Christmas. Christmas, where we have all of the wonderful family and friends gathered together, and we will do something that is absolutely sacred. We will celebrate the moment in which Jesus came into our world that happened over 2,000 years ago. I prepare myself for this wonderful time as I prepare myself for the season of Advent, that time when we anticipate the coming of Jesus once again. First in the second coming, and then as of you today, when you heard me read the Gospels, in the form of a baby. But I think I've discovered that what I do every year has become something sacred to me. And that is putting my lights on my house. You've heard me preach about this. Because it's something that I do every year. But it's amazing to me that every time I do this, Jesus gives me another sermon. And that happened today. Well, it didn't happen today, but it happened this past time when I set it up six weeks ago. Six weeks ago, I was looking at my house. And I was admiring the three hours of work that it took for me to put all those lights up. And as I was looking at these lights, I also noticed the one place that seems to always elude me. The very peak of my garage. It's the highest part in my house, and I don't have a ladder that will reach it. And because of that, that peak has remained bare all these years. Well, as I looked at it, I thought to myself, this is the year that peak is going to be lit up. I began to look at what I had, and as I was thinking about what I had, the first thing that I thought of was the fact that, of all things, I'm a trained firefighter. I know how to throw up ladders, I know how to climb ropes, I know how to transfer to the ropes, and I know how to climb over most ropes. As I was looking at it, I began to see that there's one particular place on my rope where two of the sides come together, creating a valley. So then I thought, well, if I put the ladder right there, I can climb up, transfer to the roof, climb to the valley, get to the very peak of the roof, and then shimmy my way all the way down to the very point, and at that point, put up the lights. No problem, right? <laughs> As I was looking at this, I also thought what my friend Todd always tells me, he's a roofer, he goes, Mark, you have a widow maker roof. <laughs> because the peak is so sharp that you can't make a mistake. If you do, you're gonna come plummeting down. But then I thought, if I don't try, then I'll never succeed. I put the ladder up, I put the lights on my shoulder, and I began ascend, ascending that ladder. But at that moment, when I put my foot on the very first rung, the very first step of that ladder, a thought came to me. If I go up this ladder, there will be a point of no return. Well, I'll have to keep going all the way up. But in order for me to get to that point, I have to climb the ladder. I have to take that risk to have that victory happen. I think, brothers and sisters, we have a lot of ladders that are put in front of us. In fact, I think ladders are something common. It's those challenges in our lives that will help us go to the next step in whatever we're trying to achieve in life. Sometimes it's as basic as starting a diet. That ladder for me never seems to work. Other times, it's something bigger. It could be something as big as moving to a whole new state to start a whole new job. It could be something as big as starting to date somebody. It could be something as big as trying a new way of looking at life. 
It could be a way in which looking at how Jesus is changing our world and our church. But those ladders, whatever they may be, it's a big step to step on that first rung. And to be very honest, everybody doesn't succeed. In fact, you've heard about one who didn't, King Ahab. King Ahaz, he was sitting there in a battle. He has literally a war happening around him with two other kingdoms. As he's doing this war, he's losing. But he has his trusty prophet, Isaiah. Isaiah looks at King Ahaz and he says to him very clearly, Pray! Pray to God to send you a sign. A sign deeper than Sheol and higher than heaven. Pray! And know that God will help you. But then Ahaz is looking at Isaiah saying, but to pray means that I would have to put somebody before me, that there's a power greater than me. I have the armies. I have the people. I don't need to believe that heavy in God. I can do this all myself. The problem is he knows he can't. And in the moment when he sees that his armies are truly falling, he looks at Isaiah and he goes, I can't pray. That's going to be putting God to the test. And at this point, Isaiah's happy. He looks at Ahaz and he calls him out. He goes, you are making this statement not because of faith. You're doing it because of fear. Because you think you know better than God. And because of it, you won't offer your prayer. He then goes on to say the moment in which God will answer the world's prayers and the world will respond to it. He says, there's going to be a lady. And she's going to be given a baby by the Holy Spirit. And that baby is going to come into this world, and there's going to be a man there who's going to have to accept him as his own. And he too will place a ladder, but that man won't fail. He'll succeed. And when that baby comes into this world, the kingdom of God will be experienced. And he looks right at Ahaz, Ahaz, and he says to him, but you won't experience it. Because of your fear to walk that ladder, the kingdom of God is going to walk right by you. Well, I did make it up that ladder. I made it all the way up to the ladder. I shimmied myself all the way to the very top of the roof, threw my leg over the, oh, that, peak, thank you, threw my leg over the peak. And as I did, as I promised, I started shimmying myself down all the way. I had lights in one hand and prayers going the other way. I seen it on YouTube. You saw it on YouTube, that's good. As I was about a third of the way down, the heavens started to open up, and it started to rain. If you remember, two weeks after Thanksgiving, or excuse me, after Halloween, it was cold. It was very cold, and the wind was blowing hard, and the first thought to my mind was, this is going to form ice. And do you know what it did? It formed ice. And every puddle that I saw, you could see it starting to frost over. And then I had to make a choice. Do I keep going? Or do I go back down? If I go back down, nothing's going to happen. If I go back to the way it's always been, nothing's going to happen. If I stop progressing, nothing's going to change. That belly, that peak of part of my garage will not be covered in light. Or I can simply keep going and see what I can do. Well, I did. I kept going and I shifted my way all the way down to the peak of that light. I like doing this. It's kind of fun. <laughs> I put the lights up, and then I began to shimmy myself all the way down. As I was doing that, it dawned on me, especially as I was reading this gospel text, there are many times, brothers and sisters, when that challenge, it seems overwhelming and so great. But if we don't take that challenge, we simply remove the ability to celebrate the joy and victory of life, particularly when it comes to faith. You see, that's what Joseph did. Joseph was there, he was betrothed to Mary. Mary being betrothed to Joseph is a legal binding contract. For all intents and purposes, they were married. All that had to happen was the actual ritual. That's all that was left. Imagine Joseph when he hears that Mary, at home, is with child. Could you imagine having your child come to you and say, Mom, Dad, I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit? It'd be a little hard to take in, wouldn't it? Well, Mary was pregnant with the baby, and Joseph, hearing this, decided that he was going to dismiss her. That was his choice. He could dismiss her because of what had happened, and he could do it in a variety of ways. Inevitably, what would happen is a very real possibility that Mary could be stoned because she broke this contract. 
But instead, he did something different. He listened to the angel that came to talk to him that said, Joseph, this is a gift from God. Mary was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is where it changes a little bit from simply referring or reflecting on what's happening to telling Joseph what he can do. This is your choice. You can name him Jesus. But no one naming him, you're not just giving this boy a name, the name that means God saves. What you're doing is you're claiming him as your own. This is a commitment, Joseph, that you are going to look at this child and the child will have your lineage. The king of David lineage. But even more important than that, you will be this child's father. And you will live your life raising this son as your own. It's a pretty big challenge to be asked to take on a whole family that's, in his mind, not his. But he does. He names Jesus. He claims him as his own. And because of that, unlike Ahaz, Joseph does not have the kingdom of God passed. In fact, he experiences all the glory of God in that boy. That's the difference from either walking up the ladder or walking away. Overcoming the challenges that are in front of us or simply taking the easy way out. Joseph took that challenge. And because he took it, he was blessed. But not only was he blessed, we were blessed. Because of Joseph's decision to embrace this Christ child, our salvation was brought into this world. And we've all been blessed because of that. I think about this, and it reminds me how much God loved us, that he was willing to send his only son into this world to make sure that none of us were lost. He was willing to literally break into our story to make sure that none of us would be abandoned. And yet that's all he asks is that we not abandon him. That we don't walk away from the challenges, especially when it comes to faith. But instead, we look at what do we need to do to make that ladder happen. To climb it to the top and to put those lights on the peak. Well, I did it. I got down and I have to admit, I was a little proud of myself. I had confidence in myself and confidence in the skills that had been taught as a firefighter. I looked at those lights and I thought they were going to be magnificent, especially because that peak now had lights all over it. Then I said, look, the lights, it dawned on me. I forgot to plug in the lights to test them. <laughs> they were all strung together, but I still had to plug them in. I walked over to the side plug that we used to plug the lights in, and I opened them up just like Chevy Chase on National Lampoon. And I brought them together. As they connected, I looked up, and do you know what I saw? A beautiful illumination of that guy. They all came off, thank God, because I wasn't going back up that ladder. As they came on, I could see the lights literally bringing joy to me and to everyone else. It was a wonderful moment, and it's something that I, I cherish every single year. But you know what, brothers and sisters? Every single year, God gives us the lights that he wants to shine. He gives us all the opportunity to overcome the ladders. The only thing is, just like Joseph, we must be willing to do it. We must be willing to walk forward and take those challenges on. Because if we do that, then you will always see that the light of Christ will never go out. It will shine bright in this wonderful place we call his world. And we are his chosen people to do it. Amen?
church, the world, and all in need. Hear your church, O God, as we pray for all who belong to Jesus Christ. Where the church is scorned, preserve it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear those in need, O God, as we pray for all who face uncertainty, those without work, housing, food, or health care, and those in any kind of need, especially Kathleen, Rachel, Maggie, Wally, Earl, Johanna, Adele, Donna, Ida, Steve, Diane, Chris, Stephen, Karen, Audrey, George, Janet, Robert, Veronica, and Pam. Bring good news to all in need of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear this community of faith, O oh God, as we pray for families and friends who gather in this season, for travelers and hosts, and for those who will work or serve others this Christmas. Let the peace of Emmanuel, God with us, shine in every heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear this community of faith, O oh God, as we pray for those in our military, especially Amanda, Joe, Peter, Brett, Caroline, Jake, and Bryce. Remind them they are never alone, and please bring them home safely and soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear all who mourn, O God, as we remember the lives of our beloved dead, especially Jean's brother, Jim. Encourage the living to learn from our ancestors in faith as we follow your call. Lord, in your mercy, you hear the cries of our hearts, O Lord, fill us with hopeful expectation that in each day and hour we may love and serve our neighbors. In Jesus' name, Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you may greet one another with Christ's peace. <laughs>
darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. And we look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel. Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the power.
pray. God of abundance, we give you thanks that in this holy meal you have invited us to feast with you and one another. May the taste of your love remain with us, and may our words and our work in your name invite others into your bountiful grace. Send us from your table to proclaim your presence, even as we await the glorious coming of Christ our Savior. Amen. Christmas is coming! <laughs> Two, four, six, and eleven, and nine o'clock on Christmas Day. It's going to be a wonderful festival and celebration. It's a great moment in which we truly can simply celebrate the fact that Jesus is truly a part of our lives. So be sure to come. If you like, invite friends. I know there's a lot of people out there that needs to find that light of Christ. Um, any other announcements? What time is worship next Sunday? Nine o'clock next Sunday. You didn't think I knew, did you? <laughs> be sure to come on in. It's going to be a wonderful celebration as well. Anything else? The children's Christmas program our jam kids are putting on at the 1030 service today. So if you want to stick around and watch something entirely different, come on back at 1030. If there are no other announcements, I invite you to rise as you're able for the benediction. Now may the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you 